Red-eyed crocodile skinks have easily become one of the most entertaining and rewarding species of reptile I keep. Just wait till you see what I have in store for you in today's video. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. The last few weeks you guys have been requesting that I do a video on how I tamed or kind of conditioned my red-eyed crocodile skinks. Well today I'm going to share with you what worked for me in a few easy steps so that you who are hopefully lucky enough to own this incredible species can do the same with your animals. So stay tuned for that. If you're new to this channel and you enjoy watching videos and learning about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians and different kinds of cool invertebrates, definitely consider subscribing down below and then not forgetting to ding that little notification bell afterwards so that you don't miss any of my future uploads and content. I upload videos every Tuesday and Friday. For today's question of the day, I want to ask you guys, have you ever been able to tame one of your reptiles or condition it to be comfortable around you? Let me know about your success stories because I'm all ears. I want to know about that awesome pet that you have a great bond with. Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll give your comment a heart and we'll engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks guys. Okay friends, so when it comes to taming or conditioning any sort of reptile, quite frankly, the key to their heart is food. Food is the way that you can develop a bond with the animal. Now, I've said this in many other videos. I'm only sharing this as my opinion, but I feel like food is where you build this connection. The animal associates you with something positive that it likes, and that's how you can create a sense of comfort, a sense of tolerance in your pet. What's also incredibly important is understanding the pet you're keeping. Is this a species that's shy in nature? Do they have a bold tendency to be food aggressive? These are all things you have to consider and learn about and understand prior to making these efforts to develop a bond or relationship with your pet. Now, when it comes to crocodile skinks, the first thing you need to understand is that they're very reclusive and shy animals. What we're trying to do is create a sense of comfort in the animal so that they're less inclined to run away from you. You want to zone in on the food drive, the food motivation. Through repetition, positive reinforcement, you want that animal to associate you with food. But how are you supposed to do that when they're always hiding, never out in the open. I mean, half the messages I get about red-eyed crocodile skinks are, help, I don't know if my skink is eating. How do I make sure they are? So what we're gonna do today is, we're going to be going through a few of the steps I took to get my crocodile skinks to be a bit more comfortable. Now, in all honesty, they can have different personalities. Sunny, as you probably know by now, is a lot more shy than Sappy. He does sometimes tong feed, and he does sometimes come out, but he likes his space. Sappy, on the other hand, I've gotten to basically the point where she'll like follow my fingers. She's waiting for food. She's always around, excited about it. So, the first thing you want to do with red-eyed crocodile skinks is understand how they live in the wild. These animals are usually found around streams and shallow bodies of water. They dig little burrows and tunnels around fallen wood and debris. They can be found under palm leaves, things like that in Papua New Guinea where they're naturally found. Now, what we're gonna do is remind ourselves that making a shy animal feel safe, first and foremost, has to do with how their environment is set up. So with crocodile skinks, you want them to have a strong sense of security, you want them to feel safe. And the best way to do that is to basically overcrowd their enclosure with plants, hardscape, places for them to hide. Because funny enough, the more cover they have, the more comfortable they feel to come out into the open knowing that it's that easy to go into hiding if they need to do that. So as you can see, it doesn't need to be fancy. I literally have a tank full of pothos. Cheap, cheap plant you can buy for a few bucks. Grows rapidly. I'm constantly pruning out of this tank. Pothos. Just get some pothos. They can beat it up a bit. It's hardy. 
and fill the tank with it. You can use other plants by all means if you want to do something fancier, and I, I personally will be doing that when I make their upgraded enclosure, but Pothos works just fine. Have a few pieces of wood that are securely fastened or set up on the bottom that aren't going to topple over on your beloved skinks, and they will burrow under it. So once that's all been laid out, you can start to take early steps towards interacting with the animals. I strongly suggest that you keep crocodile skinks at eye level. Now these animals aren't arboreal, but I find that if they were lower and you're coming at them from above, they're going to be even more scared. Having them at eye level gives them a sense of security and that's really important. So I can slowly approach the enclosure. If I see that the skinks are out, I'm going to want to move slowly. You don't want to be jolting and moving really fast and startle them away. So now that we have a secure enclosure, the animals are happy and they feel safe, we can start to try and let them know that we are the bears of food and we mean them no harm. For me, with animals as shy as crocodile skinks, I recommend using some kind of worm dish. Now, I feed my crocodile skinks a lot of crickets and those are a great option, but some people worry because they don't actually see their animals eat. They're like, oh my goodness, is my crocodile skink even eating? I don't see it eat. Well, this is a way you can make sure they are. Now, I'm not sponsored by Komodo or anything like that. This is just a dish I picked up. Worm dishes, there are tons of different brands that make them, but essentially it's just a dish that has sort of a curved lip that you can put mealworms in or superworms if you get the larger ones. Uh, this one is actually rated for superworms too. And what it does is just makes it so it's impossible for the feeders to climb out of the dish. So by using a product like this, you're actually ensuring that you can systematically see if your pet is eating enough. You could put four superworms in here and know that if they're not in there, it's because you're skink ate them, right? So start with something like this. Grab a dish, we're gonna remove it, put some worms in it, and set it down in the enclosure. You just do that for a month, let's say. Eventually, your crocodile skinks are, let me tell you, they're watching you. You might not see them, but they're watching you. They're gonna see that hand come down every time and say, oh, that's the person that gives me food. And so they will at least start to associate you with that. The more that happens, the more likely they are to come out a little bit already, preemptively, because they're excited about food. Then, you can start trying to replace this with tongs because they already know that the thing that's in here is their favorite food. Why not just take it off something else? Yes, this may be alien to them, may scare them, but it's an extension of you and that space already makes them feel a little bit more safe. Don't go crazy and think, okay, I'm just gonna use my fingers, like good luck with that. It might work, but doubtful. The extension creates a sense of security. Try offering the worms on tongs. Now again, this is months or a month at least after doing this, so we can try that. And essentially, you're just gonna take these small baby steps using food and slowly make these efforts to create the bond. You also have to be comfortable with the possibility your crocodile skinks may not become that tame overall. And definitely, if you had this idea in your head that you're gonna be handling your crocodile skink and taking it out like a bearded dragon, they're not the animal for you in that case. They can sometimes tolerate a bit of handling if they're used to it, but my principle is the animal decides if it wants to be handled. So I could put my hand out flat for Sappy and offer her a super worm and she might climb onto my hand, but that's her decision. I don't try to restrain her. I mean, unless it's out of necessity and I have to move them or check on them, you know, I don't want to create a double standard here, especially with the babies, but it's kind of detrimental to what you're trying to do, right? The animal's going to be afraid if you're trying to grab them when they don't want to be held. So always work at their pace. So let's see how this can all work in action. Um, I'm gonna put some worms in my worm dish here, and then we'll give you a little example or demonstration of how this works. So for presentation's sake, I always come in here and wipe the glass because they got some of the dirt and clay here. But before I do that and startle everyone, I just want to show you while they're comfortable. We got Sappy over here who thinks that I'm about to feed her. Lucky for her, we are definitely gonna feed her today. Hi girl, are you adorable? Now, what I wanted to point out to you guys, very exciting news. So you can see the shell is there. And we have a new baby. 
Hello there. So congratulate the lovely parents. We got Sappy over here. And Sonny is right now taking a nice spa vacation on top of his filter. But yeah, there are now three babies in here. One juvenile, two youngsters. There's another one hanging out by the water. You can kind of see them. Uh, so that's the second oldest baby. And then the juvenile in there starting to actually lose a bit of that red coloration on the head. But yeah, the Trip family is doing awesome, guys. They're just wonderful little skinks. All right, so we've got our dish here. I'm gonna gently grab a few superworms. Sappy's already ecstatic. Again, guys, I'm going to be upgrading these beautiful animals into a 36 by 18 by 24, which is really exciting. So once we do that, we won't have this awful reflection anymore. But yeah, so we got a few superworms here. Now we're gonna put the dish into the enclosure and see how the animals respond. Obviously, Sappy's gonna be all over that because she's tame, but the idea is still there. So you can put this even in a spot that's more in the open. So that way, you're kind of teaching them not to be too afraid. But yeah, the superworms can't get out of here. So, just have it like that. And there, that's probably gonna be what'll happen every time, nine times out of 10, I should say. Uh, the animals will most likely grab a worm and peace out right away and take it or eat it somewhere else they feel safer. Oh, Sunny's coming now, it looks like. And they can hear it too, like, there he is. They hear them squirming around in the dish. He's just over there. Oh. Here he is. Come on, Sunny. Sappy just finished hers. She looks like she wants to come back for another already. Come on, Sunny. Don't let Sappy get all of them. Cheeky little lady. Yep. She's gonna take them all if you don't get some. Come on, buddy. Get in there. He's shy. Oh. Again, you just gotta be patient and calm. I think he's gonna go for one. Oh, there we go. Good job, buddy. Good job. It's nice to see him and you can see how broad his head is. And Sappy's taking another. Good job, girl. And we have Baby over here who was like, what? Where are you guys getting all this food from? Now with the youngsters, I wanted to show you guys how opportunistic these guys can be. This baby <laughs> took the tail off of a super worm while Sappy was eating it. I wasn't kidding. They'll go for prey much larger than they are. And uh, they're pretty formidable with their jaw strength. So. We're gonna let them go now, little cutie. I think this is the middle-aged baby, not the newborn. But yeah, this sort of lets you see uh, how easy it is for them to, I guess, share food almost. All right, we're gonna put them back. You little, go oh, little cutie. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> oh, they're awesome. You got your super warm tail. Kind of scared me to be honest. I was worried about him just jumping in there to take food from Sappy. But it worked out in his favor. Enjoying your food there. so let's say you've gotten to a point where your crocodile skinks are happy to take food from the dish you're even able to sometimes tongue feed them now you could consider trying offering them food from fingers sappy is waiting here she's excited let's see if she will there we go she took her little superworm we have sunny in the background who is 
munching away. Good job, buddy. Now, if you were to ask me how to take the taming to the next level, I would tell you that it'd be to get the animal to actually sit on your hand. This is a really weird angle, but I'm trying not to block the camera from you guys. So uh, you see, I can actually get her to climb right onto my hand like that. But then she wants to go after. Well, that's a baby step. You see that it creates a sense of comfort. So there you have it, guys. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video. That's kind of how I did it. It's not really rocket science. It really just has to do with learning about how your animals behave, how they would in the wild, and catering to their needs so that you can establish a connection with them. But I'm telling you that food is the gateway. So just as I've shown with other animals like Sabzi, with Tiki, the Toke Gecko, it's always about the food. And that's how you kind of create that bond. That's how you instill the idea to them that you are harmless and you mean them well and you mean to fill their bellies with goodness. <laughs> Anyhow, that being said, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Really appreciate all of you. This year has been incredible for me, for us as a community, and I'm so grateful for the growth we've seen, for the things you've allowed me to accomplish, to get to the point where YouTube is actually my full-time income. It's not always easy. I work really, really hard at this, but this is a dream come true, and it's all because of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't wait to see what's in store for 2021. Wishing you all good health, your family, your loved ones. If you want to support this channel further, I have a Patreon page to link down below, as well as my merch store where you can purchase clothing and other cool things that support my animals and my channel. Awesome. And yeah, I'll leave it with that. Have a wonderful, safe, and responsible New Year's Eve. And I'll see you guys on New Year's Day. Take care, everybody. If you want to see more content pertaining to these amazing animals, the red-eyed crocodile skinks, click the link up above to my red-eyed crocodile skink playlist. Awesome. See you guys on Friday. Bye.